While Jim Morrison was taken from us at only 27 years old and influenced generations of artists with his style, stage presence, and enormous talents of singing and songwriting, Morrison frequently rubbed people off the wrong way and has always been described as having a bit of an attitude towards people. For this reason, many rock stars avoided Morrison and didn't speak too highly of him when asked about him. Here are eight rock stars who didn't like Jim Morrison. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. While Jim's bandmates didn't dislike Morrison or didn't have regrets after his death, for a long time his bandmates were angry at Morrison for the way that he died and how he left things off with the band before his death. Just months before Morrison died, in March 1971, Jim moved to Paris with his girlfriend after completing the album L.A. Woman in an attempt to clear his head and get sober once and for all while he was living in Paris. According to his bandmates, they were unsure of when Jim was coming back and said that Jim wanted to move to Paris before the album's release. They had no idea if Jim was coming back anytime soon and were unsure if Jim would even come back to promote the album on tour once the album came out. His bandmates did, however, say it would be a good idea for Morrison to get sober and move to Paris and encouraged Morrison to do so once he revealed his plans to his bandmates. Unfortunately, Jim would die just four months after moving to Paris on July 3, 1971, and his bandmates were in shock. Upon the news of his death, his bandmates were in denial of his death and were later filled with grief after realizing that the news was true. However, Doors drummer John Densmore was particularly upset with Morrison being so careless with his life and felt that Morrison's irresponsibility led to his death. Densmore later skipped Morrison's funeral altogether and didn't visit his grave for three years. Keyboard player Ray Manserik was in such shock that he only went to the funeral to really see if Jim was dead and claimed that he never got full confirmation if Morrison died because he didn't see his body. Manserik even went as far as keeping the rumor alive for years that Jim had faked his death and made his other bandmates very unhappy by doing that. Fortunately, decades after Jim's death, his bandmates finally found solace with Jim's death and all later forgave Morrison's behavior and often paid tribute to him after his death. While Janis Joplin was initially starstruck when she first met Jim Morrison and respected him as an entertainer, she later grew annoyed with Morrison and felt he was a bit of a creep towards her. As the story goes, Joplin and Morrison were very much attracted to each other at a party and respected each other as contemporaries and idolized each other's work. However, when Morrison tried to hook up with Janice, she turned him down respectfully, but Morrison kept trying to seduce her. When Janice told a friend to drive her home, a drunk Morrison stumbled outside drunk and pulled Janice out of the car by her hair and tried to stop her from leaving the party. To his surprise, Joplin grabbed a bottle of Southern Comfort and smashed it over his head and knocked him out cold. Unfortunately, the two never reconciled before their deaths, and it's safe to say Janis Joplin wasn't a fan of Jim Morrison's. While Lou Reed's band, The Velvet Underground, were coming up around the same time as The Doors, frontman Lou Reed could not stand Jim Morrison. First off, Lou was not a fan of the hippie movement of the late 60s and hated West Coast bands, which included The Doors. And given that Morrison was at the forefront of the counterculture movement of the mid to late 60s, he especially despised Morrison. When Lou received word that Morrison had died in a bathtub in Paris, Lou joked, How fabulous! In a bathtub in Paris, I have no pity at all for that silly Los Angeles person. Despite being an artist who was synonymous with the 70s drug and psychedelic culture, Frank Zappa was not someone who took part in the drug culture and always maintained an anti-drug stance throughout his career. That's why, when he was asked about Jim Morrison and The Doors, he said he didn't like how artists like Morrison glamorized the drug culture and how his drugged out stoned performances were mistaken with being an energetic, enigmatic frontman. He also believed that Morrison was the epitome and personification of what drugs can do to someone and turn someone from an ambitious, intelligent person to a washed up stone drunk. He also called the band's music distasteful and obnoxious. 
While Jerry Garcia was known as a nice guy with a friendly spirit and humble attitude, he wasn't afraid to dish out the blunt, harsh truth when he needed to express his unfiltered opinion of Jim Morrison. He told Blair Jackson in the biographical book, Conversations with the Dead, I never liked the doors. He said he found them terribly offensive when the Grateful Dead played with them and said that it was back when Jim Morrison was a pure Mick Jagger copy. Not vocally, but his moves and physical appearance were all taken from Jagger. He also said that later on when the doors were reaching big success and Morrison was going for a more serious approach, he said that Morrison's title of being a rock poet was completely undeserved. He later finished the conversation by saying that he was sorry to break it to everyone, but Jim Morrison was not great. Not even a little. Before Jim Morrison became a violent and chaotic drunk in his final years, Jim Morrison was good friends with Beach Boys drummer Dennis Wilson. And back in the early days of hanging out on the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles, Dennis and Jim were good friends who frequented the Whiskey A Go-Go. However, their relationship began to sour after Morrison started hanging around with serial killer Charles Manson, Raymond Sarek, once recalled the story of when Morrison and Dennis picked Charles Manson up from hitchhiking. And Charles showed up with his guitar, and he was going to see producer Terry Melcher to see if Terry would take Charles' demo and play it on the radio or use it for his own musical projects. But Terry didn't like it. Since Terry didn't like it, Charles was going to try and attack Terry, but he was never able to catch him. Anyways, when Dennis saw Morrison and Manson together, he didn't like Manson's energy and stopped hanging out with Morrison. After hearing the news about Manson, Dennis Wilson's suspicions around Manson ended up being true, and both Wilson and Morrison were deeply entrenched by addiction and alcoholism. The next time Wilson saw Morrison ended up being in the late 60s at the Whiskey A Go Go, where Morrison was heckling bands, and Wilson ended up confronting Morrison, and the two later ended up getting into a fight. From that point on, it's unknown if that was the last interaction between the two, but Wilson hasn't spoke about Morrison ever since. In July 1969, during the making of Led Zeppelin II, the Doors were at the peak of their success, and the Doors and Led Zeppelin got to play at the Seattle Pop Festival. During the concert, there was chaos going on while the Doors were on stage, and the members of Zeppelin went into the crowd, to see what the fuss was about. When Zeppelin watched the doors on stage, all they saw was Morrison swearing and making nasty gestures at the crowd throughout the entire performance. Jimmy Page said that while he had always been a fan of Morrison's songwriting and vocal abilities, he wasn't impressed with his approach to live performing. Standing there in black leather, doing nothing but taunting the crowd, was not Page's definition of a good show and Morrison disappointed the members of Zeppelin. The band would call the performance embarrassing, and even Robert Plant came out and said that it looked like Morrison was high on stage, and he just kept on making lewd sexual gestures that was really just sickening to watch. While it might seem like a dream on paper, if Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix jammed together on stage, this couldn't be further from reality, as the two times the musicians interacted on stage, it was a disaster. The two first met at a late night jam session at a New York club in March 1968. Besides Morrison and Hendrix, Janis Joplin was also in attendance watching from the side of the stage as Hendrix was melting faces with the mesmerizing performance that left the audience in awe. However, once Hendrix started playing a blues number, a stoned out Jim Morrison climbed onto the stage and began shouting weird noises while holding onto the mic stand for support because he was very drunk. At some point, Morrison ended up on his knees during the performance and started making sexual gestures right at the waist of Jimi Hendrix while Jimi was playing his guitar. While Morrison had his arms wrapped around Jimi's legs in total Hendrix fashion, Jimi paid no attention to it and kept playing the song while Jim was making disgusting sexual remarks into the microphone. Infuriated by what she was seeing, Janis Joplin rushed to the stage and smashed a bottle of Southern Comfort over Jim's head, knocking him out cold yet again. With the drink she had in her hand, she then proceeded to pour it all over Jim's body until he woke up. When Jim woke up, 
all chaos broke loose, and soon, Hendrix, Morrison, and Joplin were rolling all over the floor of the stage before being broken up by their roadies. From there, all three musicians were carried off the stage, and Morrison was the most seriously hurt of the three. Just a month later, during a performance in Montreal, Canada, Morrison interrupted a Hendrix performance once again, acting as if nothing had happened between Hendrix and him just a month earlier in New York. This time, though, he asked if he could join Hendrix and sing vocals while he played guitar. As the respectful guy he was, Hendrix politely turned Morrison down, saying, That's okay, fella. I can handle it myself. Morrison responded angrily, saying to Hendrix, Do you know who I am? I'm Jim Morrison of The Doors. And Hendrix delightfully responded, Yeah, I know who you are, and I'm Jimi Hendrix. That was the last known public encounter between the two, and it's unknown if Hendrix said anything else about Morrison after that. However, it's very understandable to assume if Hendrix was not a fan of Morrison or The Doors. Anyways, what do you guys think? Were you surprised by anything here that anyone said about Jim Morrison? What do you think of Jim Morrison? Let us know in the comments down below and like the video and subscribe to the channel for more great videos just like this one. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.